and two, just to exp you know, explain what is appropriate and what's not appropriate and what spirit we ought to have. I mean, this is just a, a good sermon to have and, and to understand where we're at. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Satan is the one who's going around trying to devour Christians. Okay, we ought not to be jumping on Satan's side and devouring Christians ourselves. That's not our job. And we're going to get in a little bit later. I'm going to talk about marking and avoiding people and things like that because we need to understand that. But again, those are going to be more of the exceptions to the rule when, it, when, when those situations arise. This isn't something that should just be a continual thing just all the time. We're having, we're, we're, we're you know, oh, this person's bad, that person's bad, this person's bad. That, you know, it's like, come on. We can have disagreements and still have, and, and, and how do we deal with that? We're going to deal with a little bit of that more tonight. Let's go back to Galatians 5 here where we start. There's so much in this, pa this one passage that's going to instruct us and help us to have the right mind. Verse number 13, the Bible says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So right off the bat, what's the, what's the attitude we ought to have? One of service one to another. Right? Service within the church. Ministry. Our church is a ministry. We're here to help other people. When you come to our church, hopefully you have a mindset that is not, gimme, 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 do for me, church. What can you do for me? It's, how can I help? How can I be a blessing? Who can I help? What can I do? I'm here to serve. That's what this church is all about. It's a service to other people. Now, if you come in here and you have needs, we want to help you. We want to help you with your problems. We want to help you if there's something that this church can help you with. Amen. We'd love to do that. We're here for you. But everybody's individual mindset ought to be, well, what can I do to help other people? I want to help the people that have problems coming into church. I want to have that mind of love serving one another. That's the attitude that we ought to maintain and, may and keep as the main focus. Not, who can I uncover? Who can I get dirt about? Who can I expose? Who can I spend all my waking time following and seeing what they're doing? And if they're not doing something that lines up with what I think they should be doing, then I'm going to report them to the authorities and I'm going to publicly post it and, you know, whatever. Okay, that is not the right spirit. Verse number 14, for all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do you want people looking over your shoulder and looking at every single thing that you do and like, and you know, like, do you want someone scrutinizing every action that you make? If you don't like that, then how about you don't do that to other people either? Verse 15, but if ye bite and devour one another, he says, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. When you start striving and fighting and biting and devouring, What's that going to lead to? You're just going to devour each other. It's not going to be good for anybody. You start tearing people down and biting and devouring. And, and you're left with just being consumed. Verse number 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Meaning that the biting and devouring, that's not of the spirit. That's not of the spirit. You start biting and devouring people, biting and devouring one another. Within the church, brethren, hey, instead of doing that, how about you walk in the spirit? Verse number 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And it's going to list off a lot of things. I want to point out a couple and spe specifically, you know, for example, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Those are all lusts of the flesh, works of the flesh. Verse 20, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Look, hatred, wrath, strife, these are all things that are, that are associated with the flesh. Along with everything else here, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such likes, of the which I tell you before, as I've told you, also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And this is contrasted with the fruit of the Spirit. Right? So if you're walking in the, he's got done saying, if you walk in the spirit, you're not going to fill the lust of the flesh. And he told us the works of the flesh, and some of those are hatred, wrath, and strife. 
right? Just fighting and hating and biting and devouring. But if you have the fruit of the Spirit, it means you're walking in the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is going to bring forth love, joy, peace, right? Long-suffering. Long-suffering means you allow things to happen without just jumping to biting and devouring. Let's face it, you know what? We're, we're all a whole group of imperfect people here. Nobody here is perfect. We all have our flaws. We all have our sins. We all have our problems. And if you're going to start nitpicking at people, well, guess what? You're going to find a cause of fault in everybody here. And should we have that attitude that just says, oh, man, you, I, you're doing this or you're doing that. You know, get out of my sight. Well, okay, be careful because with what judgment you judge, you're going to be judged. And, you know, the people on Facebook that just love to just, just every single time someone does something they don't like, they better beware and take heed and watch out. On social media, whatever social media people are using, I mean, whatever. It happens. It's out there. People get super holy and super self-righteous and start tearing down other people. And oftentimes, without even knowing all of the details, all the facts, the whole story, they just want to spout off their own opinion. And you know what? People don't care about your opinion. Yeah, right. And oftentimes, what you end up doing is just making yourself look like an ass. 